All right, this video is going to be going over ordinary versus singular points and how to determine a minimum radius of convergence, which is important when we're looking at series solutions. So let's first look at a linear second order differential equation um, in which maybe we don't have constant coefficients in the front. Maybe we do have functions in the front. If we divide by that leading coefficient, then we could write this in standard form like so. Um, remember that then that first term cannot be zero. Um, if it is zero, then we don't have a second order differential equation and we can't divide by zero. So there's two reasons why that has to be the case. So a point X is said to be an ordinary point as long as when we have this standard form, these two functions are analytic, where analytic means a power series exists. If that is not the case, then we call it a singular point. So let's look at some examples. Um, these first three examples right here, all points are ordinary points. Um, and the reason for all x that this would be true is these first two have constant coefficients um, in front of all of our derivative pieces. And the last one, e of x and sine of x, are analytic for all x. Power series um, exists for those for all x values. However, when we look at this next one, um, no zero in the front, so we're good. We are already in standard form. So in this case, maybe we write P of X equals X and then Q of X equals natural log of X. Um, we have a domain restriction here, right? So this is going to have ordinary points for X greater than zero only, even though the polynomial here or the line really Y equals X um, would have ordinary points everywhere. Um, it's a continuous function, this natural log piece is going to restrict. So we can only have ordinary points for x greater than zero. And then let's look at a couple of other um, examples here as well. In this case, um, I'm good on my p of x and um, q of x or my a2, or my a1, excuse me, and my a0 are fine, but I can't have anything zero here in the front, right? So I need to let x squared minus one not equal to zero. And so x cannot be equal to plus or minus one. Um, so that would be our ordinary points, or we could say x equals plus and minus one are the singular points. Similarly, here at x equals zero, I would have a singular point. Most of the time, we are only going to be looking at real numbers, but it is important to note that singular points don't necessarily have to be real numbers. Um, in this case, x cannot be equal to plus or minus i, and we can have complex singular points. All right, the next example we need to look at is find the minimum radius of convergence of a power series solution. Um, and this one is actually going to have some complex singular points. I wanna do an example um, using this one up here first. Um, where we have real singular points um, and then pull into the complex one. So this one I'm going to actually pull over here. Um, I know that these are my singular points. So if I wanted to find a radius of convergence around x equals zero, well, I know that I have I can only have convergence at ordinary points. So if I think about on a number line, here's zero, here's negative one, and here's one, like the minimum radius of convergence I could really have is one in that case. Um, 
if I wanted to maybe look at three, like x equals three, then I could have a radius of convergence of two because that's the distance down to that singular point. Um, and so these singular points are really important because you need to understand the distance between the, the point that you are trying to find your power series at, like what the center of your power series would be, um, and then how far it is to any singular points that you might have. That's what's going to define your minimum radius of convergence. Um, let's just say here in this example, if I again wanted to find like x equals negative five, so down here, then my radius of convergence is actually four in that case, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and find the singular points of my differential equation here. So I am going to find the zeros, or say not equal to zero, um, and there aren't any numbers that make this factorable, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula. And I end up getting 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 over 2, which ends up giving me 2 plus or minus 4i over 2 or one plus or minus two i. Now, if you don't know how to graph in the complex coordinate plane, you do your real numbers here and your complex numbers here. So this is the point in the complex plane, one of them at one plus two i is where this is located. The other one is located at 1 minus 2i. If I want to figure out the distance to that ordinary point of 0, 0 is here because 0 is equal to 0 plus 0i. Um, so I could use the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula in order to find that. So it's going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared, or the square root of 5 would be my radius of convergence around um, x equals 0. If I need to find the radius of convergence to x equals negative 1, then that would be the square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared, which is the square root of 8, um, or 2 square roots of 2 would be my radius of convergence there. Now, we're not going to be dealing with a lot of complex numbers, so I don't want to get us too bogged down into this and like graphing in the complex plane and those types of things. Um, this is more just an example. We will be doing more, however, of like radius of convergence in the real plane. So if this example made a little more sense to you, that's a good thing. Um, but you, I just wanted to make sure you do see this is an example in the text of how you can translate this to the complex plane um, in order to find these radius of the radi, radii radius of radiuses, I think it's radii, of convergence for these problems.